Hey guys, welcome back to I Love You, Carolina Sanders, a finger looking good dating simulator by KFC and made by another. Well, made by some company. <laughs> I forgot the names. Um, yeah, so. Welcome back. So, I know it's been a while. I'm sorry about that. Now we just have to continue on from the last chapter that we went through. And um, I don't remember all the voices, all the characters here. And so, I, in turn, I don't remember the, the voices that I did, but let's just go. Oh, here we go. Um, Colonel Sanders. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Oh, I remember this. I just don't remember which one I chose. Be modest but thoughtful? Or how about this one? You know, about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you always, you also know a thing or two about blurring minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do, you can do better? <laughs> I like his face. Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? <gasps> heard of them. I t attend an entire garden of chili pepper var varieties. Habanero, Poblano, Cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. Oh, he's angry. Our recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to let this be the last time you improvise on my recipes, baby. I'm heading back to class for the next lesson. Oh, jeez. That, that certainly didn't go as planned. You'd better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Cronus Addis doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step into the massive cooking arena. Whoa, jeez. Where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Miriam! Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? Oh, Miriam. You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Sprinkles, okay. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. He pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Oh, oh he's kind. Great. Sure, Avi, I'll prepare a station. For that you as a partner, Imeria is left standing all alone. Oh, alone. Two different students to quickly take notice. Oh, hello new partner. Oh, it's Pop. Beep boop. Bzz. Oh, they are so kind. Oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Pop or Clank? Clank is the um, diligent one. Pop is the slightly um, eccentric one. Maybe... The Eccentric and eccentric person might work. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. Aw, oh, sorry, Clank. Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the st same station as Miriam. I'm a chef! He holds up a banana and without peeling it, proudly eats the entire thing. It's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. Aw. I love your... I know they're I love your enthusiasm, Pop. She looks at you like, really? 
this kid? It's too late to change your choice now. <laughs> Sorry. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright you two. For today's lesson, you are going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colin Sanders? To take tartar seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. No. He won't like that. Using octopus will blur Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and grape. Ooh, actually. Yes. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? <laughs> What's the voice? And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, no, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. Ashley. Oh jeez, this voice. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders? Heart is... Eh. Sanders' heart is my business. And you'd better keep your f fingers off my man. Off of my man. Mm. Van Van. Ooh. Did someone call for me? <laughs> Ugh. No. Jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Avi's dream, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. What's this music? Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Uh. Actually, actually, no, it looked like AV was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. Them? You know how it is. These younger ama young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to co concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But, Cur but, but Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner of you than this thing that has positioned him itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complementary sh shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. Sure. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. <laughs> Ashley is really going at your at your heart. You need to add you need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Ashley is really going at your heart. You need someone to ask for backup. Is this from the game or? Sorry. Oh my lord, it is the game. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of ch hunk of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your favorite forever city always has your back. There, AP. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bigger with prima donnas. Oh sh jeez. Partners were, cho partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? Sometimes conflict can actually build character. What? Is he angry? I wouldn't want you to shy away from a bit of healthy competition without peers, AV. Ah. <laughs> oh, he's got angry from that, okay. Wow, is he just not that into you? You think a gentleman would defend you in a situation like this? Did you do something to offend him at some point? You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn, those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. Oh yeah, they're, they're cute. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. What? <laughs> Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfectly cre creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. 
it's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sandex sends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth round gravy smothering <laughs> smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Oh jeez. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. Two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and depression in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensils into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be to be with Colonel Sanders. Yeah. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> Fan man, do something, do do something, do something. Okay. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Man tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, A.V. We do not waste food in the broom cooking area. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to, to eat it from where, wherever it lands. Kena has... Kena has potatoes face? Bannerman rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. What the frick? Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Played in a battle, <laughs> battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. My god, that, that actually does look appetizing. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look on with envy. Oh, it's the student. <laughs> Wrong voice. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite in of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic too late. It has been eaten. Oh, uh, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I, I don't f feel so good. <laughs> it killed him! Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slipped up in Pop's mouth. <laughs> Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then it then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! Entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, interrupting the moment and snap snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. What? I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. <laughs> ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Avi? 
There's something I need to tell you. Van Van. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Ah, oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy... Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's Van Van. Sorry, I got a text. Okay. You see... Yeah, sorry. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream. That one day, I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream. Day and night. Never stopping. Never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. <laughs> we should follow our dreams with, it, with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes. Floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey! No, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to, s to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that you're kicking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. I... Yeah. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me! I'm the hero. <laughs> What the frick? Spork Monster! The Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Ooh, Van Van. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! We will not let let harm come to another student, except for that ghost kid. I kind of dropped the ball on that. <laughs> oh, this is Colonel Sanders. Wrong voice. Oh, sh be afraid. Be a very afraid of me. Because I'm a monster. See? Is he, is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. <laughs> what will you do? Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Trepidation. You close your eyes tight, but that open, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat lot of good that defense did. Okay, now attack. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Defend. Say to defend, which defense will you use? Buff up. You draw energy into your arms, thinking back on all of the steer staring you did in the kitchen as a child. Your muscles grow super swole and you're ready to take on anything. Spark Monster is no quitter. Buffs up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spark Monster uses utility tinsel. You take two, two, two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive in the battle. Now attack. You decide to go on the attack. What's this chow down? Chow down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spark Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the, onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spark Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Color Sanders. Vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Color Sanders summons the energy of thousand chickens. <laughs> Pot pie power pinch. Pot pie power pinch does ten damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You save me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. I don't know. Spare the searching beast. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells, with a golden chicken on the cover. Oh. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is... Borko. Hmm. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from the bat from your battle buzz, 
you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Connie Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In a tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you are together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. What the hell? Zzz. You're... You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Where they're. I oh, just I skipped it too fast. You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered about tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used. Beep. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your, your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be... Um... I think I might be... What? I think I might like pop! What the frick? I did that. I did this. Like him? Like... Like like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him like like him I did this why did I do this we got to talking after class and he's actually a totally sweet guy not only that but he's really smart he told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders did you know that Colonel Sanders en enlisted in the army when he was only three what not only that but he found a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because he put a hat on one time and thought it looked cool but Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy. Like I am with Colonel Sanders. Hmm. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in the school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Oh god, I skipped it. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great! You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bester's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Mm, mm. So this summer, I, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. That The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with him, a very strange feeling came over me. and The flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know that w know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It, it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it. It came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Yeah. It's um, it's Colonel Sanders' secret, sir. Yeah, make up a fake ingredient. You could think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about? It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. 
Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing on your figure that you satisfied her curiosity, she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that she can't quite see. That's probably got- oh god, I skipped it too fast. Before you, before you can ask her to confirm that she de was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry Blossom's petals fill the air. It's Coronel Sanders. He is arriving at school. And a freaking horseback? Stand back and my image is going. Prince Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Yep. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. Uh, here we go. What a horseful beaut you have. I mean, what a horseful beaut you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Being a good friend, Marion attempts to cover for you. Oh, uh, oh, Avi just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and poisoning, and we're up all night. We're up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile, as if to say, "Situation handled." Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears to the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something. Uh, Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know, it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restrict restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? <laughs> what the hell? You try and get a peek over Bad Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why don't you like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Why don't you make like a bee, honey? Um, tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get a closer. <laughs> there you go. You sit near near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something about so something that sounds a bit like mag uh, like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and imp improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're a little imperv cooking, are you? You make the rules. Ooh. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if if it ate you. <laughs> what the hell? Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. What's that? It doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a get a look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly rec recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad! Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig any, in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <laughs> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you. I'm sorry. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such a language, not even from from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Rams. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> oh jeez, what's, what's that face? Protect me, Colin and Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colin and Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse. Right? <laughs> Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least. Or don't. 
Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class today. Class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Sparkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry. I get a little worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that, let that be a lesson to you. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite foal, <coughs> the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson? Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. Yeah, that happens to me too, but not because of Colonel Sanders, no. When you come to your Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, AV. Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Shimmering pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. Why didn't you do that? However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend. Oh. <laughs> this guy again? Goes the student. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh, oh man! You come to it and find you, everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, "Geez, I should pay a better attention." We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, I have your lights dim. What's this button right here? Oh, okay. Your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Via time comp comp competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics for these two is off the charts. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time. Step up and tell them. You're um. I don't want to like. Uh. This is so aggressive. This is also like. No, I don't want to waste time. Whatever. You're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, AV. Thank you. I love watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Yeah. Boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students. Please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sport. sports sink court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge, lights, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. The huh? Arrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
That's right, but how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Winning gets to rub my furry belly. Yes! Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need some, you need to see in this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? Holy creeping hell. Oh, uh, ten. That's wrong. I've seen snoujers in better sense than that, and the miniature kind, no less. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? That's right. You must <laughs> let's trust. Okay, that's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? Oh, what? This is a horrible, horrible time to start forgetting. Uh, yep, I know. Next question. You try to shut out the noise with the arena and focus on your cooking. What is it the sign of success? Silence, sizzling, bubbling. That's wrong. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Ah, oh, is this the end? Yep. Game over. I'll try again. Here we go again. <coughs> the shoulder of Orion? <laughs> what? Oh my god, uh, here we go again. Here we go again. Ah, jeez. Bubbling. A uh, silence. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. Out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, A.V. Thank you. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can do is to the Sanders. How many spoons was I agree with? No! What happened? Can you make it a Girl. You're sh shining in a desert. In a desert, I am the only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. What? I know, right? What? You know what? Shouldn't you be focusing the challenge? You're falling behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. What does that have to do with crafting? With crafting spaghetti and fried chicken, then I can make it speak. Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, actually, has already begun playing elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. Why did you start thinking about Corner Sanders and his chunky body? What the hell? <laughs> to make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer as you do the crowd gasp. <gasps> Yikes! Zips. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Bruh. You might not have any hands, but AV does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dirt to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way, and a hard way. Don't get far by going the easy way. That's true. When you hear everyone talk, everyone talking, you realize how serious your, your arrow was. You immediately sho shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dirt before it's overmixed. AV, no! But you're not fast enough. Your hand gets stuck in this. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beat. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his hand in shame. Head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go wrong. Oh, that's too bad. And now here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the, compare the two on account of Avi's injury. You see, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks into the dish. Oh, but I suppose you should at least tell us what you've prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to the dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that takes good and tells the story of excellence. I was going to ask Avi to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this cream cream of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand, Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the germ, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Oh jeez. What the hell? Inside you'll find a delicate fried cheese cooked Okay, atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, tender nugget, and probably would be very cool. Oh, Jesus, it's, make, it's making me hungry now. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity, simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> 
As he places a sauce covered fingers into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize. Internalize the rage you feel. <laughs> Internalize it. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you may run for, for the quad to be alone. Aw, jeez. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A s storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. That's exaggerated. Very exaggerated. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from the that from that run in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a lo I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then. Then think, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, successful, motivated, very narcissistic, very na narcissistic, I guess. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. Yeah, yeah, very narcissistic now. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Oh, really? I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved, I resolved then that, that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone or something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for the, my, my past misdeeds. Yay! Pop, pop. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scar from the night before, you prefer it for the worst. It's Spork Monster. Barco? It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore. But, I just want to say that I was wrong to attack you and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Oh, oops, sorry. Wrong voice. Monster problems, am I right? Ah, oh, thanks, Barco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. <laughs> I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spark monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, really. But I was still a student, until one day some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook. Precisely. I procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I, be I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and, I sh and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Avi, together I am, together I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think I've played a bit too long now. How long has it been? I don't know. So, yeah. I'm gonna stop here. Hopefully it's saved in a more recent file. Otherwise, I have to do that all over again. But anyway, thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry for the um, bad voice and narration, but you know, please forgive me. Give a like in this video if you enjoyed. 
and subscribe for more awesome content and yep more content of this K this KFC dating simulator will be will be coming up soon more often than you think because I am not as busy anymore so yep see you guys bye <laughs>